certified in nutritional counseling. She has a master's degree in exercise uh, physiology. She is a certified reflexologist as well. And now we're going to learn more about ozone therapy. So hey, here we go. Hello. So last time it worked without the microphone. Yep. So we're good. Okay. So now I know I have 45 minutes. So <laughs> this one isn't as much because it's very um, concise about ozone therapy. So I have a confession to make. This is my little baby. This is my new thing that I absolutely love doing. And I'm gonna tell you why um, in so many words, but I do wanna <coughs> explain what it is first, and then I think <clears throat> why I'm so excited about it will come through. And just so you know, um, I have these here, but I also they're also at our table for root function, and this describes ozone therapy, and you're welcome to take one of these as well. So, <clears throat> ozone therapy, I'm gonna give you a little background. Um, this changed me personally. So I am a chronic Lyme survivor and I had chronic sciatica, which is really sharp pain down your leg from your back. Um, and I'm a physical therapist. And so I had all the PT, I did all the other stuff. And finally, um, I took the extra step to see a physician in the Minneapolis area that did ozone therapy. And so he did this therapy. <laughs> He did this therapy on my back, so I had chronic sciatica for I don't know how many years. He did it on my back and then into my right buttock, and my sciatica went away on my way home and it never came back. And so that is why I get excited about this because then I'm like, wow. And so I had another appointment and that got rid of the back pain. And then I'm like, finally, I'm like, this is amazing. The other thing that happened along the path. Um, is because of my Lyme's disease, I believe, I was having a lot of bladder issues. And just so ironically, I used to work in urology. So my urology surgeon friend um, checked things out and said, I don't know what you got going on, but your bladder is really angry right now. Because I had an MRI, I had a cystoscopy, I even had surgery, a biopsy, to make sure it wasn't cancer, all was clear. Not really an infection, they really didn't know what was going on. Finally, I found another doctor that did insufflations of ozone into my bladder. I mean, I was peeing blood. I was waking up with bladder pain. It was horrible. It was influencing my work. Two treatments and it's gone and never came back. And so I'm like, there is something to this ozone stuff. So when I came here um, I, and, hooked, and um, started working with Dr. Wagner, I said, I really want to take an ozone class. I really need to learn more about this. I really want, I wanted to help my chronic pain people. And so I did. And so last October, I went and trained under Dr. Frank Schallenberger, who is an amazing doctor who works in uh, Reno, Nevada. And he actually started the prolozone or invented the prolozone technique that I'll tell you about. And so I started implementing it at Root Function and it's super exciting. And so. That's why I am passionate about this because I have been <clears throat> working in healthcare for over 33 years, and this is one of the few things I've ever heard them say the word cure for. So it just makes me super excited because of the chronic pain people I see, the chronic condition type thing. So that is my little bit of background on where Ozo came from. But let me explain it to you, and then I'll go over some examples. So ozone therapy is not a drug therapy, it's a natural therapy. And we call it a biological response modification therapy because it uses your own body to heal. And that's what we're all about at Root Function as well. And also with my naturopathy, that is what I want to do is help, help your body heal itself. So it's all about oxygen. Oxygen is one of those things that we can't get enough of and we can't live without. And so it's really about ozone turning into oxygen when it gets into your body. And so the primary reason for success is using this oxygen utilization through the ozone. Decreased oxygen utilization really disables our healing. If we don't have oxygen, we can't heal. And the condition can become chronic, resulting in like permanent edema, inflammation, hypercoagulation of your blood, endothelial damage of the cells, and pain. So when you think of what that list entails, it's like a lot of things that could go wrong with your body. So since decreased oxygen utilization is the primary cause of degenerative disease, we can't get away from that, right? We're all getting older. So um, the treatment of all diseases, including aging, autoimmune diseases, cancer even, 
degenerative diseases, cardiovascular diseases, and chronic pain is that you are not optimizing your oxygen utilization. So it's all about oxygen that ozone is based on. So this whole decrease in oxygen utilization, I'm sure you've heard about free radicals, you know, causes more free radicals. And just FYI, which was a um, enlightening moment for me is, it's okay to have some free radicals in your body. You know, I've always heard they were the bad guys, but it's okay to have some, it's when they take over and then they don't allow the oxygen to do its job. So that production can produce pathology and results in the organ breaking down and degenerative disease. So decreasing the oxygen utilization is also big into that mitochondrial function I talked about before, the little battery in your cells. If you don't have oxygen to feed that battery, it slows down, it doesn't do its job, and that's the whole foundation of what our body does. So that's the energy source. So optimal function of the mitochondria is influenced by this chemical reaction and the ratio of the oxygen you have in your body. So chronic pain can be improved by ozone therapy because it increases circulation, it improves the way you use your oxygen, decreases those free radicals like I told you about, decreases acidosis, I'm sure you've heard about lactic acidosis and things like that causing problems, decreases inflammation and also eliminates infection. One of the reasons that I think, that's next on here, I'll just say it now it'll, even if it comes up later, one of the reasons I truly believe that oxygen is as, effect, as, a, is as effective as it is, is because it's multi-purpose. It doesn't just go after the pain, it doesn't just go after the inflammation, like me, I had chronic Lyme's disease, and so did I still have an infection? It can help with the infection. I had the inflammation, it can help with the inflammation. It helps with everything all at once, and that's the beautiful thing I believe about it. <clears throat> Oxygen is the most critical nutrient, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's not just how it's taken in, it's how it's used. And so we need to get it in the body so the body can take it and put it where it needs to go. And so I laugh at myself when I say this, but I often say that ozone is smarter than I am. So I put ozone into the general area and it goes where it needs to go. It's a gas, it can travel in your body. And I just kind of have, I like to do visuals and I kind of picture this little ozone atom turning into oxygen and then saying, oh, it's needed here in your cartilage. Oh, it's needed here, it's needed there. And so I have certain protocols that I use and when I inject it, which I'll go over in a minute, I inject it in certain places, but it literally goes where it needs to, and I think that's awesome. So oxygen utilization can happen either locally or systemically, and this is why ozone therapy can be used in a variety of conditions. Now, Dr. Schallenberger used to be the president of the ozone, American Ozone Association, um, so he is a bit biased, but he literally said that if he had one modality to have in the clinic, he would pick ozone. And as hopefully by the end of this talk, you'll realize how versatile it is and how you can use it in so many different ways. So the science behind ozone is it's an activated form of oxygen with three atoms. So back to a little bit of chemistry, oxygen is two oxygen atoms, ozone is three. So ozone therapy accelerates the metabolism or absorption of the oxygen because it stimulates the release of that extra oxygen atom when it's injected or infused into the body or the bloodstream. So, and this is interesting, it has been shown in research studies that ozone can actually blast holes into viruses. So when it blasts holes into the viruses, it makes them so they can't function or multiply anymore, <laughs> which is a beautiful thing. So it can get through the membranes of viruses, even HIV. It can diminish or eliminate fungus yeast, bacteria, and any abnormal tissue cells. And, and also, you know, that kind of almost sounds like chemotherapy, right? So it's destroying things, but ozone doesn't hurt the healthy tissue, which I think is the other really beneficial part of it. So if the oxygen system of the body is weak or deficient, and that can be if you don't exercise, if you're a smoker, you don't eat well, you have environmental pollutions or inefficient breathing, um, therapies are used to provide body with ox oxygen, right? You see people with oxygen masks, um, they can do it intravenously or through the skin. Um, and then a lot of that too helps eliminate the toxins and fight infection. So we already know that oxygen is really important to have, 
But this is a part that was a real eye opener for me. It has a lot to do with energy, too. So through, and I'm sure, it, actually I laughed because they brought up the Krebs cycle and I kind of went back to grad school and I cringed because the Krebs cycle is very involved in your body, but it all has to do with energy. And so through the process of oxygen utilization, oxygen is converted to water plus energy, and that's the NAD, and the ATP is the energy, and it's converted, converted into the free radicals, superoxide and nitric oxide. I don't know if you've heard, but nitric oxide is something that we all need as well, because it actually increases oxygen in our body, and they're both essential for the cellular function. So when oxygen utilization is optimal, then you have less free radical damage, and then the mitochondria are happier, and then you have less of this damaging process. So unfortunately, um, the longer we're alive, the more of this damage that, that is happening because of the mitochondrial wearing down. So a little more of the science, and then we'll get into how it's used. So as oxygen utilization in inevitably loses its efficiency, the free radical damage increases like we talked about, and then you have this whole cycle going on, and that leads to the mitochondrial delay or decay. And then a lot of that has, the mitochondrial decay has a lot to do with the degeneration of our body. Now it's pretty interesting because I always like to see with all the different things that I've been in to see kind of what the new words are or what's happening. It's really all about mitochondrial function right now. A lot of people are doing supplementation for it, are trying to test for it, and now it shows up here in ozone too. So I think as we get smarter about what our body needs, we're getting more specific about getting to more of the root cause again, and it really is mitochondria. And if you don't have that background or the bottom, you know, foundation, you know, nothing else is really going to be success as successful. So the level of premature aging and degenerative disease has to do with this mitochondrial genetics and how much it decays. So the starting point is genetics, right? The starting point of the mitochondrial function is all about genetics, but the decay we can help modify. So that's what the oxygen really is doing, is trying to modify the decay, the rate of decay that the mitochondrial are doing with this oxygen utilization. And patients who are aging prematurely or sick and have chronic pain really struggle with utilizing this oxygen. Um, and, but this can be reversed with ozone. So that's the exciting part. So here are the causes of oxygen depletion. I'm sure this doesn't surprise you. When we talk about pre-mitochondrial function, so before getting to the mitochondrial, it can be you're in, enable, unable to break down your fats in your body. It could be low blood sugars, that hypoglycemia. It could be low blood flow or that ex ischemia or hypoxia, which is just not enough oxygen in your body or inflammation, which is swelling. So that's before you get to the mitochondria. The mitochondrial factors itself, these should look familiar. Toxicity, infections, stress, hormonal imbalances, nutritional deficiencies, and then methylation, which is how you break down your, your um, nutrients in your body. And if you aren't able to do that well, decreased fitness, medications, all of those things affect it. So why, this is what I was getting at, is why ozone therapy? Why is everybody excited about this? Well, most diseases are the result of two to five problems. And it's really hard because when, you know, it's hard for me sometimes because when patients come in, you know, I have this whole plan that I want to do with them. But my goodness, it could be very involved. And it could take, you know, let's do this for a month, let's do this and then let's do this supplement. I really try not to do too much at once because it's overwhelming and I want the body to adjust. But if you have two to five things going on, you know, you need to really kind of address them all. But the beauty is ozone therapy can do that itself. So success, success requires that each imbalance must be treated and for the best results, they all need to be analyzed and treated all together. Um, and honestly, after you've been doing this for a while, and also now being a naturopath as well as a physician assistant. So, you know, both sides with the Western medicine and then the more complementary medicine, I think this is what's missing. I think it's that people 
don't have the time, don't have the energy, or don't want to go after all five things. And that's where people get stuck on this, almost kind of this wheel, and it just doesn't go away. Or I know some physicians too that will, oh, I don't believe it could be parasites. I don't believe it could be hormones. But if they don't re regard those things, I mean, they're gonna get a percentage of people better, but they're not gonna get those people that need that better. So health is really, honestly, the optimal oxygen utilization and it can travel anywhere in the body. And so that's why I was so attracted to this. So I like this schematic or this picture because this tells it like it is too. All of these things are linked together to make you who you are. So it's your metabolism, you know, how you break down food, how you use your calories. You know, a lot of people equate metabolism with fat gain or, you know, weight gain. Infections, you know, there's so many chronic infections now. And what's really sad for me is, you know, I know the infections are out there and, you know, we try to target infections with medications, but they don't handle all two to five of them or how many are out there. I heard a very sad fact recently, and I don't know if this is true, but when people, when people are bit for a Lyme's disease, they get nine infections. How do you handle nine infections? You can't, you know, you don't want to be on nine different antibiotics. And I know antibiotics can get more than one, but that's kind of my point, is let's get something natural that goes to the base of it and can actually kill them all at the same time. Your immune system, the beautiful thing about ozone um, is it's an immune system modulator. And what that means is it does what it needs to do. If your immune system needs to be bumped up, it'll bump it up. If your immune system is too high, it'll lower it down. That's what oxygen does. Oxygen is natural and it can help your immune system that way. Circulation, it cleans your blood and it helps you be able to um, get more oxygen in your circulation. Pain, it helps a lot. So it gets into the pain receptors and it, it can help regenerate your collagen and it helps you detox. So and that's part of killing off the infections is it helps you be able to clean out. So ozone therapy repairs all of these vital links in the chain. And so again, when it's taking care of all of those things at once, it's just very helpful um, and successful. So here's what I was talking about. The decreased oxygen utilization can cause free radical formation and then less buffering. So then your mitochondrial decays and then you have aging and degenerative disease. So how does it work? Is any questions on that? Because that's kind of the science stuff. So now we're going to get into more how we use it. Um, how to make ozone. This has been fun for me too because um, I feel a little bit like a chemist and it's kind of fun to be able to mix things together. But one of the things we need to, I, I need to do when I'm doing ozone is know how much to inject and I'll get into that in a minute, but know how strong it needs to be as well. And I have to tell you that um, one of the things that I also think is so helpful is ozone is safer than aspirin. So ozone is very safe to do. There are very few things that would cause me not to treat somebody with it, and I'll go over that at the end. But it's very safe, so I feel very confident being able to do different things. And I've talked to Dr. Schallenberger about a few things, and he goes, well, let's try it. You know, and you don't hear that very much, especially with medications, you know, it's not like, well, try it. You need to know, you know, is this gonna hurt people? But when it's safer than aspirin, I feel very confident that this is helpful and it also is very safe. But we need to decide what the dose is. And I like this analogy, you know, when you think of a pot of coffee, what you need to decide with your coffee are two vital questions. How much do you want and how strong do you want it? So if there's 12 cups of coffee in a full pot, that's the volume of coffee. If the coffee may be strong, that's the concentration. That's how we measure ozone. So it's concentration, and I'll go over that when I tell you how I make the ozone. How much is there is the volume, and how strong it is is the concentration. These questions refer to the concentration and volume, and once we understand those, then we calculate the dose. So it really is not a hard thing to do, and it has been really helpful for me because there has been some standards that other people have been successful with to do the concentration. So ozone concentration represents the strength. It's, com it's commonly measured in the microgram, microgram milliliters, or I actually go by gamma. So we use the word gamma to describe the concentration, and then the volume of gas is just how many cc's that we put in. 
So the volume of gas is represented by the quantity, so how much of it is measured in the cc's or the milliliters. Okay, so this is how we do it. Seems pretty straightforward, and I think it is. So I have an oxygen tank, and it's uh, medical grade oxygen, so it's the cleanest oxygen I can have. And what you do is you put it through a transducer, and it has electrical discharge in there, and it's diffused across this, and it creates a corona discharge. That's what it's called. Basically, it's electricity cutting the oxygen atoms in half. And then what happens is as the oxygen passes through it, it's converted into ozone. So if you see that schematic there, the oxygen goes through and then turns into ozone. Pretty straightforward. Um, so this is what's happening. Pretty, pretty easy. Electricity cutting the O2 in half and then they come into the O3s. So when it comes out of my machine, is that the next one? It is. When it comes out of my machine, right here on the bottom, it is a certain percentage of oxygen and ozone, and that's what the dosage is. So basically, I get a medical oxygen, hook it up to this um, transducer, and this is what I get from longevity, and then I get to pick the dosage on the side, and then I also pick the little knob on the oxygen because how the dosage is figured out is by how fast the oxygen goes through. So if I turn up the speed of the oxygen, you know, then it's going to be higher. And then through here, when it, it, I can turn up the intensity of the electricity doing it, so it's the intensity of the electricity and the flow that determine the dosage. So pretty easy. Pretty easy. So before I get into that though, um, I think I described that well, but I, did I mention that way I have these sheets? But how I have it written here, so to surmise that is voltage passes through the chamber, creating ozone from oxygen, and it splits the oxygen into single oxygen atoms, and then the molecule O2 is formed to the O3, which can be used. So it can be used systemically. So this has been really interesting for me. Um, I haven't done as much of this as I have done more locally, but systemic use is really fascinating to me, and it can benefit the entire body by stimulating the foundational systems that need oxygen or blood flow improvement, immune imbalancing. It can help self-regulate self and help with autoimmune conditions and creates a better environment for healing. Treatments are commonly used for infectious diseases, um, chronic diseases, anti-aging and longevity, and gut diseases. So how do you get it in systemically, you might be saying. Well, um, doesn't sound all that glamorous, but we use a catheter. And so I personally have done quite a few um, catheters into the rectum, and I've put ozone up through the rectum, and we'll talk about this coming up too. Um, and it has helped a lot of gut things. And if you put the catheter three inches up into the rectum. It's right next to the portal vein, and the portal vein goes to your liver. And so it helps detox your liver, cleans all of that out, and then away you go. Now, this is a little bit of a funny story, as I have been reading things, is it's not painful at all. And you don't really feel it, because it's ozone. And so I put it in a bag, and then they lie on their side, and again, I probably mentioned last time, I worked in urology, so I'm no problem for me, you know. Doesn't bother me as long as the patient's fine with it, they lie on their side, catheter in the rectum, and then I squeeze the ozone from the bay up into them. So I was reading an article, and um, in Europe they use ozone a lot more than we do. I think now we have maybe 75,000 doctors, but in Germany they had 250,000 doctors that use ozone. I'm the only one in South Dakota doing it from what I can tell. But anyway, so I read this article, and in, I think it was Germany or some foreign country, they made them hold the ozone for like three minutes. And we're like, okay. And so you take, you know, after you put the ozone in, you take it out and you're done. I mean, it's literally like a 10 minute thing. And so then I'm reading why they had them hold it for three minutes, and they did it because Patients didn't feel like they got a good enough treatment unless it hurt. So they told them, hold it for three minutes. And they're like, okay. And they're like, okay, now I know it's working. Because literally, the ozone gets in your body. Somebody described it as in nanoseconds. 
So once it's in your body, and the thing I do know about rectal insufflations, there's so much blood around the rectal area that things travel fast, very fast. So this is my point of entry um, for you know gut things. Um, I on myself did a Lyme's protocol that was five days a week for five weeks. Um, and that was what the protocol was. And it did bring out some symptoms. I think it helped. You know, I'm still working through how much of that I would do. And I'll explain in a minute that I don't do that with patients or how I do that with patients. Um, I did it with a cancer patient. Um, really how ozone, I believe, should be used is along with chemotherapy, that it can help with the side effects of cancer. This patient chose not to have chemotherapy and to do ozone and hydrogen peroxide. Um, but basically, you know, anything that needs to get systemic, oh, I'm here, chronic constipation, this lady had it for years, two treatments, and it was better. You know, so it gets things moving, it gets oxygen in there. So again, the systemic use. Um, oh, how I handle it. So um, I own the machine, so I could do five days a week for five weeks because it's mine. But anyway, what I have done with a couple of my patients is I have them do it two to three days a week for two weeks. Because I firmly believe that they will know if it's helping in that amount of time. But a lot of chronic conditions may need daily treatments, but there's a home unit, which made me go, a home unit? And so I talked to the doctor who treated me, who is now my mentor, he's a friend of mine, and uh, I said, are you okay with these home units? And he goes, actually I am. Um, and so two of my patients have ordered a home unit, and you get your oxygen, <laughs> You get actually oxygen. It's not as clean as the oxygen I have, but it's like at runnings or places like that. You can get um, industrial oxygen. And of course I prefer medical. Um, and of course I, I want to know that they're using it correctly. But, and I think that a home unit is maybe a thousand dollars and then it's theirs. So that's an option. And, and the, so I give people that option. But I don't think it's fair to say, go buy this $1,000 piece of equipment without trying it first. Mm -hmm. So I have found like two to three times a week um, for a couple weeks and they should know. And actually sometimes even sooner than that. So I'm fine if they wanna take over and do that. Okay, that's one way into your body, right? Another way is vaginally. So you can put a catheter in the vaginal area. You know, it helps vaginal infections, it helps yeast infections. Um, you can put it in the urethra, which goes to your bladder. So those chronic bladder conditions, like myself, um, you, you can put ozone in there and it can clean it out. Um, one of my new favorite things is I went to the, uh, besides the class, I went to the conference recently, <coughs> and you can go through your ears. There's very little um, resistance in your ears, so it goes right to your blood flow, and it can go to this part, to your brain. And so I, there was a guy at the course that everybody was um, really excited about. So I have a stethoscope that I hook up to my ozone machine. So you can get ozone directly from the machine through the stethoscope. I can also put it up your nose. And that has worked with um, chronic sinus infections. Um, but my most favorite thing for that, which I'll get into in a minute, is I can actually inject up here into the sinuses. But I want to let you know, systemically is really, is really, really effective. Now, the disclaimer I have to put in there is the gold standard for ozone is called MAC, um, and it's autohemolytic, major autohemolytic. And what they do is they take your blood out, they spin it with ozone, and they put your blood back in. Now, we can't do that at root function because we don't have a lab, we don't have, we're gonna start having IV nutritional soon, so I wanted to slip that in. But anyway, so it may be in the future, and that's the gold standard, especially for systemic. However, from my reading, they say that rectal insufflation, which is a lot cleaner and easier, is 80% as effective. So in my brain, that seems easier, um, and again, those people that get those home units, he was he was doing the rectal insufflation um, at home. Questions? Okay. Locally, so this is my favorite way to do it because I'm really excited to do injections. And so local injections are performed in specific areas of the body and they don't go systemically, like all over. They stay put. 
So the ozone gas goes to the affected area, helps to eliminate the infection, stimulates healing, but does not go to the rest of your body. So local treatments can be used in painful areas. So I have done some bagging. You can put a bag over an arm for an ulcer or a non-healing lesion, and you can put ozone right in there. Um, ulcers, non-healing wounds, and more. So that's locally, and then we can do prolozone. So prolozone is actually injecting ozone into the body. So it delivers mitochondrial nutrients and oxygen. It's a combination of a local anesthetic. I use glucose, vitamin B12, and saline. And you actually inject that to the area first, and then you take the syringe off, and then you put the ozone on top. Now the beauty of that is, is I'm sorry, it, I'm here it doesn't, it isn't cut off, so sorry about that. The procaine that um, is up higher repolarizes the injured cells, so that helps circulation. Glucose gives the mitochondrial energy. The vitamin B helps that glucose get utilized. And then the ozone stimulates circulation, improves oxygen, and stimulates your immunity and kills any infection. Prolozone corrects the interferences in your body that are causing you not to heal. So this could include stem and blast blast cells if you want to get into more of the physiology, getting the oxygen where it needs to be to have more circulation and membrane stability being reestablished and pain is reduced. And then the healing starts and you can make more cartilage too. Prolozone can be used for all of these things. Um, chronic neck and back pain, rotator cuff, degenerative arthritis, hips, knees, degenerative disc, plantar fasciitis, carpal tunnel, TMJ, sciatica, heel spurs, neuroma, tennis elbow, sinus infections, pelvic disorders, dental infections, post-orthopedic surgery pain, fractures, scars, sports injury, and pelvic floor syndromes. So as Dr. Schallenberger would say, if it hurts, prolozone can help. That's his conclusion. So you inject the ozone and the other medication in, and the nutrients, and typical, and then in the painful areas, typical areas are the joints and the spine, and prolo actually in Greek means regeneration. So that's where the word came from. So here's the stats that I love to tell and has been found to be for me is that three to five treatments, all chronic pain is at least 80% better. I've never ever been able to say that before. And I have had that with my patients. People that have had years of pain, sometimes one treatment's enough. You know, and I'm like, that just seems crazy, you know, but it's true. And again, I think it's because we're getting it at all areas, right? And we're also giving it oxygen so the body can heal. Um, I'm gonna use my husband as an example because it, I always practice on either him or me. And so um, I, he had a little bit of a back achiness, whatever. Um, and so I did one treatment with the back protocol, which is about eight injections, you know, total. There's a certain protocol. His achiness went away, but then the next morning, the stiffness he had had for three years was gone. He goes, I didn't even realize that I was that stiff. And what he did is when he was putting on his socks, he didn't have to cheat. You know how you cheat? He could actually lift his leg up. He goes, I haven't been able to do that for three years. And then he goes, that's crazy. And so I've been kind of monitoring people. And typically, people are three to four treatments. But a lot of people are two. And what I've been learning, <laughs> because people are getting better so fast, is I still have them come back for one more after they're better because they said that in class it kind of seals the deal and makes sure everything is healing that way. So again, what the application is, is I do this mixture of B12, dextrose, saline first with the procaine, which numbs it up a little bit, and I inject it in the area, and then I do the ozone on top of it. And we use, like I told you, the dosage. We use the 20, and then I put it in those areas. The other cool thing is, here's how we use it. And I already mentioned this, but you know, we're doing some dent, I'm doing some dental infusions. Dentists are huge into ozone. In fact, they kind of started it years ago. And so they do dental, they do ozone washes before they go in and do things. But they truly, and I'm excited because I have a dental appointment on Monday and I've been doing injections here and I'm hoping my gum recession is better so I can't wait to hear what it is because what a great thing, right? Instead of going and getting all this surgery done from a periodontist, 
you know, if we could do ozone here, but it makes sense, right? If it heals, brings more oxygen, brings more blood, gets rid of infections, then the tissue can heal. So I already told you about the MAH, the major autohemolytic that we don't have. There are ozonated oils and creams. We have one um, that I use at my house and I put it on scars. So you can inject scars or you can also put this cream on. Um, one of my classmates um, from taking the ozone class um, had a, I think it was a 12 year old C-section scar. She used the cream twice a day for I think she said three weeks and it was 80% better. So even topically, I don't have an ozone sauna. A lot of people in my class did and love it. I already talked about the vaginal insufflation, rectal, the ears. Ozone water, you can bubble water through it. You can bubble oil through it, or ozone through oil and water. Um, the jury's still out on whether it's okay. It's okay to drink, but the jury's out whether it helps or not because there's no scientific research on it but people say they're better. People say they're better. So it doesn't, to me, it doesn't hurt to have some water in the refrigerator. The other thing which I think is kind of cool is um, they said you need to, um, ozone does dissipate, and so you need to use it pretty, pretty much right away, but you can keep it in the fridge for a week, but you can actually freeze it. So I have little ozone ice cubes at home that I can thaw out when I need to. Um, nasal insufflations, I talked about that. Breathing ozone through the, the olive oil. I talked about the limb bagging. You know, there's a lot of people that have had mastectomies and have scars and things that you don't really want to go and inject and do all of this stuff. So they have this cupping mechanism that you can put ozone through that. I haven't tried that yet. And then the bladder insufflation. So what we provide, which is going to be growing, I believe, is the prolozone. I really like that. The other thing that was brought up at the conference that I was just at is you can do a lot of superficial infections and, or injections. And when I talk to people, I say, this is kind of like a mosquito bite. And that's how it feels. Because there has been studies to show that the sensory nerves on your skin can actually decrease the joint pain that you're having. So I am, because it's so safe, and because I believe in it and I know how much I can do on a person. Um, like for a hip, hip pain, I do the, the joint pain, which is a bigger needle, and go down deeper. And then I do some of those little superficial ones along the way. And then you can also do trigger points and muscles. And that's what I've been trained in when I worked at the chronic pain clinic too, to even do that with lidocaine. So you can do that with ozone. So I try to get all of it, you know, I try to get the joint, the more superficial sensory stuff, and then the trigger points. And I've been having good luck. And the other people that have been doing fabulous are my knee patients, because you can really get into the joint. So I put the nutrients, you know, and the saline into the joint first, and then do ozone. And um, typically, my knee people, two treatments, and they were headed for surgery. They were headed for total knees. And so it's amazing. It doesn't, you know, they can go up and down stairs, you know, it's not popping anymore. So again, it's making my job a lot easier because it's two of the hard work. So this is what we offer right now. I do have some creams that I can get from that longevity. I have only done one limb bathing, but that's easy to do. And then these other things I can offer. And so I'm sure that you are wondering. So we can go over the creams and things. How am I on time? Oh, pretty good. So the creams, again, oh, and the other thing is acne. I mean, think about all those medications we get for acne. I mean, Accutane, man, don't get pregnant on it. Get your liver checked every, I mean, that makes me go, why? I mean, I know my daughter was on it. You know, she was so frustrated. But if we have something that works better or, and is healthier for her, that's so much better. So there is an acne cream, and it's called, um, Honest O2, so I don't have it, but it's online. Honest O2, um, acne, it helps with blemishes, rashes, skin infections, um, receding gums, um, and it can also help with skin stuff, like it says. So my next thing that I'd love to do, um, at my last job, um, they were training me how to use Botox, um, and I didn't really do a lot of Botox. I don't really believe in Botox, because it's, I mean, it basically, paralyzes your muscles, you know, I get that. Um, but I was doing it for headache people and things like that. Still, it paralyzes the muscles. 
But there is some cosmetics that you can do with ozone too. So I would love to get into some of that. I haven't taken that class yet, and I've been playing around with it on myself, of course, but um, stay tuned. I'm gonna get there. So the other thing that's amazing to me is like yeast infections. You know, people with the toe yeast infections, do you know what that medication? They're on it for six months. Six months, what's that doing to your body? And there's no guarantee it's going away. So I haven't had one yet, but it, it makes sense that yeast, that the um, ozone can help with that. Orally, all of those things, they, there is an oral ozone you can ingest. I didn't buy that yet, but I can see how that helps. Again, the vaginal urethrorectal, and then the dental stuff. All right, so I already talked about the cosmetic use. The other thing that's really nice, too, is it's very antiseptic. So it's actually, um, what do I have in my little thing here? It says, somebody called me out on it the other day. Ozone is the second most powerful sterilizer in the world and can be used to destroy bacteria, virus, or odors. And they, they go, okay, Lori, what's the first? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what the first one is. But I have an inkling that it's hydrogen peroxide, which is also ozone, right? Also oxygen. So that's what I'm thinking. But besides being antiseptic, it stimulates healing. So it's not just killing stuff, right? Like a lot of the topical stuff does. It's not killing it, it's actually healing it. And I've tried this too. You can do some subcutaneous injections and it helps get rid of cellulite. It takes a lot of injections though, just to put it aside. And somebody said this in class. So that would not be probably my first choice for that. But if, if you have, some people have stubborn spots they want to get rid of. So I already told you about the rectal insufflation. So basically that whole process takes 10 minutes. <coughs> Vaginal, um, kind of the same thing. Nasal, up the nose. Um, so there's two ways you can do it. I have done both. You could actually just do, you know, the syringe and, you know, breathe in and do it. But I also have a little catheter that can go up higher if need be. Oh, my other new favorite thing with my new stethoscope, tinnitus. Never, ever been able to find anything to get rid of tinnitus, whether it's supplements. I'm a craniosacral therapist. Craniosacral didn't help, none of these other things. So people are getting better with the tinnitus when we use the ozone. And if the ozone doesn't do it, a, a doctor, or in the ears doesn't do it, a doctor I talked to at the conference said that he has gotten eight out of 10 of his tinnitus people better by injecting the, um, using ozone in the um, periauricular nerve right here. So you could do the stethoscope and then you could inject that spot and tinnitus could be better. I mean, tinnitus is tricky. That's a really hard thing to get rid of. And it's very disabling. So the nasal injection, I already told you the sinus one, sounds like it's like, ooh, who would do that? But there's a soft tissue right above your eye pee, and I have a very small needle, and I just go up there, and then I inject, and then I inject the ozone. No side effects. The only side effects you get from ozone is some people get a little lightheaded because it's extra oxygen, and some people go like, oh, I feel like a little, not high, but a little like tingly or something, and that's because of the extra oxygen. So some people get a little lightheaded and then the injection pain, but that's usually gone before they leave or that night. Um, I already talked about limb bagging, which I'd like to do more of because I think those nasty wounds can really be helped. And then I already talked about the oxygen water. So I got ahead of myself a little bit. Okay, so of course we have to talk about safety, right? So this is not FDA approved. You know, they don't, because they don't want to approve it, um, but ozone therapy treatments are consistent in the whole, or it's, and they say it's experimental, um, but here it is. So in Germany has the 7,000 doctors, oh, that's what they, the stats are. So in Germany, 7,000 doctors have treated more than two million people since World War II, and they use it, a lot of ozone therapy. We're using it more since, what does it say? I think since 2012. So I joined the American Academy of Ozone Therapy, and that's where the guy who taught my class, Dr. Frank Schallenberger, and he was so funny. He goes, I want you to join this organization 
because if anybody tries to sue you or says it's not safe, I have a letter written and I got your back and I will send in the letter and it will not be a problem. Well, that's enough for me to wanna join that, <laughs> join that group. So he is confident. And so I think they've shown, I think it's in there, there we go. There were six complications out of a thousand treatments and it's because they did them incorrectly. Six out of a hundred thousand. So that's where they get that it's safer than aspirin. All right, so this is the only reason I went, this is my last slide and then I'll answer questions. This is, these are the only things I can't do ozone. People who have this, I can't do ozone with. And I often tell them, you'll know if you have these because you'll have been diagnosed with it. So G6PD means your liver can't process vitamin C. Um, so you know if you had it. If you had acute hemolytic anemia, you would know because you'd be bleeding, you wouldn't have iron. Toxic hyperthyroidism, so you're, you would know. Um, your blood cells would be less, white blood cells would be less than 50,000. Um, you'd have really instability in your heart. You'd have acute, acute alcohol intoxication and people look at me and I'm like, like right now. <laughs> um, and then acute heart attack. And then an uh, acute stroke, you have um, epileptic seizures or convulsive states. Hemochromatosis, people know if they have that, it's extra iron in your blood. And so we just need, we can't do it for that. And then if you're receiving treatment for copper or iron, just because those are blood components and that's what we're doing is working through the blood. So I charge the same that everybody else charges. And so um, my mentor in the cities and Dr. Schallenberger gave us the list when we were there. And so it's $350 for that area. So like the low back protocol, which is, you know, eight to 15 shots in the low back area is 350. If I did another area that day, it would be 160. So it's cheaper if you do more that day. Um, I really don't like to do more than two areas because there's a, that's a lot of ozone in you. Um, and again, typically I have one patient right now that I've seen seven times and she's an outlier, man. Everybody else has been three to four treatments. And then what I like too is then I say, come back when you need it. That's, what, that's, that's how it works. Um, I talked to a friend of mine just yesterday and um, he's still good. You know, his back's 85% better and his hip pain is gone and he had two treatments. So, and, and, I, and I'm realizing now that that's maybe kind of the really exciting thing for me, but you know, people are gonna come and go really fast because it really is effective. Um, what else did I wanna tell you? I think that was most of it. Again, it will be evolving. My goal, my personal goal is to have this be 50% of my treatment because I so firmly believe in it and it's so helpful for people. Um, we do have a chronic pain doctor here in town and the other one just retired, so I don't know this guy. The other guy that I knew, knew about ozone and he learned about it 15 years ago and he didn't use it because insurance won't pay for it. He believed in it, but he didn't do it. So instead he's in, injecting steroids. So this just really fits into what we do. So um, I guess the other thing, just to tell you briefly, oh, we're good, just to tell you briefly, which I didn't get a chance to in my last talk, is what else we do at Root Function, if I may. So we do do the functional medicine. I am doing some physical therapy. I do craniosacral and women's health, which is like an internal exam and treatment. Um, we do have other physical therapy there we can call in if we need to. And then we're going to start doing IV nutritionals pretty soon. So Dr. Amy and her sister Dawn, who's our health coach, she's an RN and also a, a certified health coach, have really been working hard on IV nutritionals. So if you aren't familiar with those, it's great for people with bad guts. So the um, nutrients go right through the veins. So kind of, so the MAC, sorry, MAH might not be far away from me. If we do end up getting more of that kind of thing at our clinic. I might end up doing some of that. Um, so we do IV nutritionals, and then we have Don, the health coach. So I think that, oh, it's on the back of her. Oh, and Don does Reiki. 
So Don does Reiki too. So if we have our, our trifold out there with that information on there. Um, but yeah, ozone therapy has been super exciting for me because um, again, it's kind of one of those things that I do the protocol and I get in there, but it all makes sense to me, but it's natural and it's not hard on my body. You know, physical therapy, a lot of times I'm a manual therapist and I spend a lot of time with people, but then I hurt myself. Um, and so, I guess that's it. Questions? Yes! So you were talking knees. So knees. Like if we've got a knee that the cartilage or the disc is gone, yes. are we too far past? Nope, it can regenerate the cartilage. That's crazy. I know. Huh. Okay. I know. Yeah. And the thing is, is, you know, I am very functional as far as with people, you know, and so, you know, if you got an x-ray and said, your cartilage didn't grow back, but you can go up and down stairs and you can do your own thing, and it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, and maybe you're headed there in the future, and maybe these patients are headed there now that are all better, but not right now for function, you know? And I think that in my brain, if your function is better, you're gonna exercise better, you're gonna, you know, walk more, you're gonna take care of yourself, which is gonna be healthy overall. So no, and in fact, <laughs> I was talking to my husband, and I'm like, oh, I wish I could have got my hands on Christine Ohm before she had surgery. <laughs> because seriously, well, too late. it's not too late, but I say that tongue in cheek, but um, I think surgeries can be avoided. I'm thinking, yeah. I can, and I'm not anti-surgery. I've been in chronic pain world for many years, and I have seen people going, why didn't I do this sooner? But then you see the people like, why did I do this now? You know, so why not try this? Yes. It's safe. You'll know. I mean, seriously, these people come back and go, this is weird. This is, I, this is, I, I'm so much better. So, but Dr. Schallenberger was laughing at me because um, I said, now with the, with the sinus injection, and he goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I go up here. He goes, you're doing this to yourself. <laughs> and I go, yeah, he goes, isn't there a bail man or someone you can get off the street and do this to? And I'm like, well, I trust myself. I don't want to hurt the bail man. I want to trust myself. So I am passionate about being good at it and researching it and figuring things out. Um, but I feel like there is a whole um, open world out there for ozone. And, it's, and it is interesting. And why it's not here, I don't know. There actually is only two places. I know both of the doctors in the city is doing it too. Yeah. There are only two places. Yeah. Right or between. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. So anyway, enough of that. But I think it fits well with what we do at Root Function. So any other questions? And we have we have information out there. If you wanted this talk, this is kind of more of a science-y talk. But if you want this, you can sign up. And we'll email it to you. Um, otherwise, as before, I mentioned, we do do 15 minute, free 15-minute consults, and we have more of those sheets at our table. So if you want to sign up for that, then someone, either Dr. Amy or I, it'll probably be me, will call you and just talk one-on-one -on -one what you're interested in. And if you want to schedule, usually I just transfer people out and they schedule. If they're like, don't want to think about it, I'm like, great, okay. Any other questions? So we're all about educating, and we're all about just informing people what's out there. Well, thank you for your attention. I should have done a demo, right? Um, yep, you could probably get some volunteers. Yeah. <laughs>